Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Ethan Mitchell and today we will take a look at the Altel Evo and put it against the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. First, I wanna say welcome back and a huge thank you to everyone that has joined the channel. I really appreciate all the support and it has been a real pleasure to make these videos. If you're new here and you have questions or you'd like to leave comments, please do so. I really try to get back to everybody as quick as I can. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Altel Evo and the Mavic 2 Pro. Both the Altel Evo and the Mavic 2 Pro are two new drones that were released last summer. Both have gone through a number of firmware updates and now that they have had time to settle in, it's time to do a quick comparison. So first we're going to quickly go around the drones, then take a quick look at the apps and then put the drones up and see what kind of footage we get. Okay, first up is the Altel Evo. Going around the Evo, we can see that it has the same body style as the Mavic with folding arms and a camera gimbal suspended on the front. The Evo has two optical sensors in the front, infrared sensors in the back, two optical flow and two ultrasonic sensors on the bottom. The camera gimbal is mounted on four rubber shocks that is suspended from the body. The gimbal has a lot of suspension motion, but this is not seen in the footage. The battery weighs in at 280 grams and is rated for 4,300 milliamp hours, which provides an advertised 30 minutes of flight time and takes about 90 minutes to recharge. The total drone weighs in at 870 grams. Okay, let's go over the remote. The remote has a cell phone mount on top that can accept devices with a total width up to three and a quarter inches. Also located on the top are the gimbal pitch and selection wheels and video and photo buttons. The key feature of the remote is the display. This is the only drone on the market in this price range that has a live video feed on the remote so you do not need your device to fly this drone. Once powered on, simply press the display button and the camera stream appears in the display. From here, you can access the camera controls and drone settings by using the right scroll wheel. Okay, moving on to the Mavic 2 Pro. Unfolded, the Mavic 2 is just a bit shorter than the Evo, but overall the same size footprint. The Mavic 2 is also covered head to toe in sensors. Two optical cameras in the front, two in the back, one on each side, an infrared sensor facing up, infrared sensor facing down, and two optical flow cameras on the bottom. The gimbal on the Mavic 2 is very robust and has very little excess movement. The Mavic 2 weighs in at 903 grams and the battery weighs 295 grams and has a capacity of 3,850 milliamp hours, which provides an advertised 31 minutes of flight time. The battery takes about 90 minutes to recharge. Moving on to the controller. This controller has removable sticks, which makes the controller very compact when folded. The controller also has a display that provides flight telemetry and aircraft status. The scroll wheel on the right controls exposure, but does not turn freely as seen on the Mavic Pro or Phantom Series controllers. The controller also has two customizable buttons on the bottom and the 5D button is customizable as well. A nice feature on the Mavic 2 remote is you can quickly switch between sport, normal, and tripod mode via a switch on the side. Okay, let's jump into the apps, starting off with Altel's Explorer. The Explorer app is nicely laid out and has a map on the left, flight modes and telemetry at the top, settings on the top right, and camera settings across the bottom. To change camera settings, you can slide across the bottom of the app or you can also use the right scroll wheel to make selections. If you're only using the remote, you can use the right scroll wheel to navigate and make menu selections as this is not a touchscreen. Okay, moving on to DJI GO 4. Across the top, we have aircraft and remote battery status, signal strength, and remaining flight time. Settings is also located in the top right. The camera controls and camera settings menu are on the right flight telemetry across the bottom and flight mode menu on the left. All telemetry and aircraft status are also located on the remote as well. The DJI app also features a color view which applies a LUT to the screen when shooting in D-Log. 
Some similarities in the apps that are noteworthy are both apps feature a histogram and zebras to aid with exposure. Both apps are able to shoot in MOV and MP4 format, and both can do H.264 and H.265 codec. Okay, let's put them in the air and see what they can do. First, we will run through the camera settings on the Evo. Okay, let's put up the Mavic 2 Pro. So let's go over some key differences of each, starting off with flight time. The Mavic 2 has slightly longer flight time, but the big difference is how much more stable the Mavic 2 is. The Mavic 2 has auxiliary LEDs on the bottom, which illuminate the ground in low light and aid the optical flow sensors. This drastically improves stability in low light. We can also see the Altel Evo ran for about approximately 22 minutes, while the Mavic 2 with the auxiliary lights on ran for about 23, 24 minutes. Okay, let's go over the cameras. The Evo can do 4K 60 and it looks great. 
Filming at a higher frame rate is much more forgiving and gives you more latitude in post. The footage can be slowed down, which also helps smooth out any shakiness that may be present. The higher frame rate also reduces the jumpy background when panning too quickly and overall will give a much sharper look. Now let's talk about the Mavic 2 Pro. The main feature of the camera is the variable aperture and the 10-bit color in D-Log and HLG. Both of these profiles look amazing when graded and you can really push the colors without having it fall apart. The variable aperture also allows you to get shallow depth of field with video and stills and also helps with light management so you don't need as much ND. The Mavic 2 Pro also has a variable focus, but you have to remember to set the focus before filming. Okay, now let's talk about the remotes. The video feed on the Evo controller is definitely a game changer, and I believe this is what we'll start to see a lot of in the future. Not only does this make the whole system faster to set up, but the company will have control over the software ecosystem, making firmware more reliable and easier to update. Now that leads us into no-fly zone software. If you already have a DJI drone, you're well aware of the NFC software and the challenges that come with it. The Evo on the other hand is not bound by NFC software, so you can take off anywhere you want. Please remember, you are responsible for where you fly. So which of these drones is good for you? If you want great image quality straight out of the camera, 4K60, and don't want to deal with NFC software, then the Evo is a fantastic option and is about $500 less than the Mavic 2 Pro. But if you want the absolute best image quality, lots of automated flight modes, longer flight time, the DJI ecosystem, and the ability to step into HDR, then the Mavic 2 Pro is for you. Okay guys, there you have it, the Altel Evo and the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. Both these drones are fantastic options and both have plenty more features that we will cover in another video. If there is more you would like to add, please comment below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.